Ahoy! Learning Deadlock can be very overwhelming, so I figured I'd share some tips with you that I wish somebody would have told me before I started, and that'll maybe help you suck just a little bit less. Before you get into your first match, I would highly recommend testing some things in the Hero Sandbox, because you can quickly change a lot of settings there and also see how they feel directly on the spot. There are multiple ways to get to the Sandbox, you can see one of them here, and the first thing you want to do once you're in there is set up your key bindings, which can also be done from the main menu. For example, consider if you want to use 1, 2, 3, 4 for your abilities, or if you'd rather bind them to Q, E, and so on. Completely up to you, I will make an in-depth keybind in the future, but it's something you should check. And one setting specifically that you may want to change here is the self-cast mode, because the default mode for most people feels fairly clunky. The self-cast mode is for abilities and item effects that can either be used on yourself or on allies, so you want to have a way to quickly use that on yourself in emergencies. But if all this is bound to a self-cast button, which I think is just an unnecessary extra step. You have other options here, such as a modifier button, which you used beforehand, but I think that's kind of the same problem in a way. But there's also an option to press and hold the ability or to double tap it. And I think those options allow for a lot more control. Which one you end up going for is obviously preference. Next, you can press B to open the shops and you will see that you will have the default lash build here or whichever character you're playing. Since those builds are missing a lot of situationals, you want to look at other people's builds. In the top right corner, you'll see Browse Builds, and when you click on it, it gives you the option to go to Public Builds. Here you can see the most popular builds for each character. Now, the highest voted build isn't necessarily the best build for the character, but it's a starting point if you really have no clue what to build yet. Personally, I would recommend opting for a build that also offers a few counter variations and give you advice based on how ahead or behind you are, they just help you learn the game much better and see why you're doing certain things. Going back to base in the early game in Deadlock is something you really want to avoid because it generally tends to make you lose quite a fair bit of farm and there aren't really any quick means to get back to lane. Instead, there are other survivability options and the first one of those are sustain items. There are quite a few of these that are different degrees of sustain. Starting out, we have Enduring Spirit, which provides you with a bit of spirit lifesteal, so a relatively mild option. Extra Regen gives you 2.8 extra health regen, a very significant boost in the early stages. Sprint Boost comes with 1 health regen, so less but also comes with mobility. Melee Lifesteal can help you in situations where you can melee, but if you're getting pressured very heavily, you may not be able to do that. It's better on some characters than others. Healing Right is the most aggressive healing choice that gives you a massive heal over a very long time, but also requires you to be extremely passive during that time because you can't take damage from enemy players or objectives because otherwise this buff gets removed. Aside of that, we also have Restorative Shot, which has a 6 seconds cooldown and heals you for 30 when hitting a hero or for 10 when hitting an NPC. Monster Rounds in the Weapon Tree also comes with one health regen. Of course, you don't need to run all of these, but it's good to know that these options exist so you can decide for yourself how you want to sustain through the early game. And even if they're not included in the recommended build for your character, you can easily grab one of them and then switch back to the recommended build. There's another way to sustain, but we'll get to that in a second. First, I specifically want to mention before we get into the in-game part, when you're selecting your character, don't worry about the recommendation check marks for beginner characters. Which characters will feel easy to you purely depends on what kind of playstyle you like and almost every character that I enjoy playing and can play effectively is a character that is not on the recommended character list, maybe with the exception of Abrams because he's just incredibly simple. Instead, have a look at their abilities and consider what sounds cool to you. At this point, I quickly want to mention, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you're interested in more tips like this, there will likely be a second part, as well as a breakdown of which character may feel best to you. Next, let's get into the things in-game. At the start of the match, you again quickly have the option to change your build and also select a recommended build. If you need more time, you can pause the game, but ideally you want to be done with all of this already and have done it in the practice mode. And that brings us to our other option of survival in lane. There's a creep or minion that can heal you. You can identify it by the flag over its head and it'll attach to you with a green beam and then occasionally burst heal you. If you're able to stick close to this minion without getting pressured out, you can actually get very significant sustain from this. But now that you know that you don't need to go back, how do you buy items? There is a shop right near your lane, very close to your guardian off to the side. So you can just go there and buy items there instead, until your guardian falls. When your guardian is down, that shop closes. There is however an underground shop near the middle of the map that will always stay open anyways. 
Now the next mechanic is absolutely not obvious. There are various boxes or crates and little idols or statues across the map that you can smash. And this is extremely valuable. Not only do the boxes drop souls with a relatively high frequency, but the little statues can drop permanent buffs that you can pick up and keep for the rest of the match. So you could, for example, get a small cooldown decrease from that, you could get an ammo increase, a health increase, various things that could be very effective. And if you play your cards right and farm enough of these, it'll definitely make a difference across a match. You can find them really all over the map and destroy them in various ways. You can shoot them, you can melee attack them, you can dash through them or you can slide through them and all of that ends up breaking them. A well-timed dash or dash slide is usually the most effective way when there are multiple boxes in a row because you don't really want to slow down for them too much. And that brings us to the whole dodge and slide or dodge and jump or dodge and jump and slide mechanics because there is a whole lot going on here. Now some of these mechanics may sound like relatively advanced tech, but it's very very good to learn them early because they have such a big impact on the game, especially due to the increased rotation speed, the increased mobility that you have, that will often allow you to get away from enemies that you otherwise wouldn't get away from. So as you probably know, you have a dodge in the game and you also have a crouch button, which makes you slide when you are on stairs, for example, or anything uh, that is not even anything that's downward, you will be able to slide down on that. If you dodge in any direction and hold the crouch button, you will carry some of that momentum while you slide after your dodge. This allows you to cover significantly longer distances and also has another advantage that we'll get to in a second. The other thing you can do is a dodge jump. This requires a specific timing because you need to dodge and then press your jump button while your stamina is glowing blue. So you can fail this and the game will tell you directly that you've failed the dodge jump timing. So again, something that is very much worth learning so that you can use it effectively when you need it. If you are able to do this dodge jump, it will use two stamina for the dodge and for the jump, but it will cover a very far distance and kind of launch you forward. And at the end of that, you can also once again hold crouch to slide even further, covering even further distance. And while this normally costs two stamina, there is also an item that reduces the stamina cost. It is worth noting that unlike the dodge jump, you cannot fail the dodge slide timing. So if you're a completely new player and you're practicing a lot of things at once, then you might want to opt for the dodge slide in most combat situations so you don't have to focus on getting that timing right as well. You'll still have plenty of opportunity to practice the dodge jump when traveling between lanes. Sliding specifically also has another benefit. You may have noticed this in the clips that I was showing. When you slide, you have infinite ammo. You do not end up using any ammo if you're shooting while sliding. This applies both if you dodge and then slide, but also if you're sliding down, for example, some stairs. So in many situations, you can conserve a lot of ammo as long as you're not getting to the point of having to reload. The infinite ammo is not active while you're reloading or while your magazine is empty. So this only works if you have some bullets left before the whole thing starts. If you execute this well while chasing, you can definitely get a ton of extra shots out of this, especially since some characters can even reach movement speeds where they don't require any additional effects or items to slide and they just slide from running fast enough and pressing crouch. More beginner tips are coming in the next days, so consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you want to hear about that. We'll, for example, talk about counter building, ability leveling and neutral buffs. And after that, we continue straight on to the advanced tips and item breakdowns. So plenty to talk about here. I hope you're as excited for it as I am. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.